Let's create a spawn system where I can easily set a spawn point with a set spawn command. I can walk anywhere else and then I can teleport back to that spawn point with a different spawn command. We're also going to make it so whenever players respawn, they're going to respawn at this location. If you're new to Java, then you might struggle to follow along with my Minecraft tutorials. Don't worry though, I have a complete Java course that you can watch for free by signing up for a free trial of Skillshare. This course has around 50 videos and nearly four hours of content that are all designed for the beginner. So if you're new to Java, then this is the perfect place to start. Go ahead and click on the link in the description or in the pinned comment to sign up for free. So the first step is going to create a spawn utility file. So within my util folder, I'm going to make a new class called spawn util. And this class is going to implement listener because we're going to have an event listener within here. So we can add in a constructor. So public spawn util. Here we're going to have our main plugin as a parameter. So in my case, that'd be worn off key tutorial. I'm going to call this plugin. Obviously, you would call this whatever your main plugin class is. So going into my main class, I can now say spawn util. I'm going to call this variable spawn util and assign it equal to a new instance of spawn util passing in this. I'm doing this here so whenever I go to create my spawn and set spawn commands, I can pass in the spawn util object. That way I can gain access to the set and get functions. So going back over to spawn util, I'm now going to create a couple local properties here. So I can say private config util, which is something I created in a previous video. I'm going to just simply call this config and then I can say private location. Make sure you're getting this from org.bucket and I'm going to call this spawn. Now within your constructor, we first want to register all the events within this class. So I can say bucket.get plugin manager dot register events. Here we can pass in a listener, which is what this class is, as well as a plugin. So I can pass in this and then our plugin variable. We'll actually work with our events here in a few moments. The first thing I want to do is make sure we can actually read all the spawn information from our configuration file. So I can say config equals a new config util. Here we can pass in the plugin. We can also pass in the name of our actual file which in this case, I'm going to have spawn.yml. I now want to get access to the world name, the X, Y, Z, yaw, and pitch for the actual location that's stored in the spawn YML. So I could say string world's name with a capital N equals config dot get config dot get string passing in world. I can now say double X equals config dot get config dot get double passing in the string X. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this line a couple times. Here, I want to get access to Y as well as Z. Obviously, we could change the variable names as well. So we now have access to our X, Y, and Z variables. And now we want access to the pitch and to the yaw. And if you don't know what yaw and pitch are, I found this amazing diagram here on Google Images. Basically, the pitch is how far your character is going to look up and down, and the yaw is going to be how much your character is looking left and right. So we can get these values from the player location whenever they're set in the spawn and store them inside the configuration, which means that whenever we're loading the configuration, we want to also get those values. So the set spawn is going to be exactly where the spawn setter actually ran the command. Now these are going to use float variables. So I can say float yaw equals a cast of float config dot get config dot get double because there is no get float here. So I'm just going to pass in get double and we're going to cast it to a float variable. Here we can get access to the yaw and then I can go ahead and copy and paste this. And then we're going to get access to the pitch. Obviously we need to actually change the variable name. So now we have access to the world name and our exact coordinates, including where the player is looking for our spawn location. Now, in order to create a spawn location, we first need access to a world. So I could say if the world's name is not equal to null, we now know for sure that we do have valid information within our configuration. We can gain access to the world by saying world, world equals bucket dot get world. And here we can pass in either a UUID or a string for the name. Here we're going to pass in the world's name. And now I'm going to say if the world is exactly equal to null, meaning that there is no world on this server with that world name, then we want to log this to the console. So I can say bucket.getlogger.log. And here we can pass in a level as well as a string. So for the level, I can say level.severe. And for the string, I can say the world with quotes does not exist. Now inside of the quotes, we want to actually add in the actual world name. So I can create actual quotes in here and then add in the world's name. Then I can go ahead and return. And now after this if statement, we know for sure that we do have access to a real world that was saved in our configuration file. So I can now say spawn equals a new location. And here we can pass in the world, the X, Y, and Z values, and then the yaw and the pitch. So now we've actually set our local spawn variable equal to the location from the configuration. Now I want a couple more things to do. The first of which is to listen for the player respawn event and then to set the respawn location equal to the spawn variable. So I could say at event handler, public void on player respawn. 
I can then pass in the player respawn event. And then here I could say if spawn is not equal to null, because we might actually have a null value in spawn if there was nothing in the configuration, then I can say event.set respawn location passing in spawn. Now after this, I want to create a teleport function. So I could say public void teleport. Then here I can pass in a player object, and this will be the player we want to actually teleport to the spawn. So the first step is I want to see if the spawn is null. So if spawn is exactly equal to null, then I want to go ahead and return, but I also want to send a message to this player. So I can say player dot send message. Here I can add in chat color dot translate color code, which we can add in an and symbol, and then a string for and C, the spawn is not set. Now after this if statement, we know that the spawn does exist, so I could simply say player.teleport passing in the spawn. Now finally, I have one more method to add into this class, that would be public void set. This will then take in a location, which I'm going to call spawn, and the first thing I want to do is say this.spawn equals spawn. So now we're setting the local spawn variable equal to this new spawn argument, but of course we don't just want to do that, we want to actually save it onto our configuration file. So I could say string world's name, equals spawn dot get world dot get name. Then I can say double X equals spawn dot get X. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this a couple times. We can now say spawn dot get Y and spawn dot get Z. Of course, we want to also change the name of our variables here. Now we can get access to our yaw. So float yaw equals spawn dot get yaw and then float pitch equals spawn dot get pitch. Now we can go ahead and save this to our configuration file. So I can say config dot get config dot set. And here we can pass in a key value pair. In the first case, we want to pass in world, which is the exact name I'm looking for whenever our actual plugin starts up right here. So we need to use the same exact strings. In this case, there'll be world, X, Y, Z, yaw, and pitch. So going down to the bottom, here we have access to world. I can now pass in the world name. I can now say config dot get config dot set. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this a couple more times. So here we have X, Y, and Z, yaw, and pitch. So for the actual values, I can add in X, Y, Z, yaw, and then finally pitch. And of course, we want to actually change the values we're storing. So here I can add in pitch, yaw, x, y, and z, and now we're good to go. The last thing to do is to actually save this. So config.save, and this will actually save the file. So now where do we actually use these methods? Well, we're going to create two more commands. The first one is called spawn. The second one is called set spawn. So let's head over to our plugin.yml file, and let's add in two more commands here. So here we can say set spawn. The description is going to be sets the server spawn. Usage is just going to be simply set spawn. And then we can add in a permission, which is going to be spawn.set. Of course, you can add up whatever permission node you want. Then we want a second command, which is going to be spawn. The description will be teleports you to the server spawn. The usage is, of course, just simply slash spawn. And we can add in a permission if you want. In this case, that would be spawn.teleport. Now it's up to you on what permissions to add, if any. I'm going to have op on my test server, so these won't matter too much. So now let's go over to my commands. I can make a new class, which will be called spawn. And this is going to implement a command executor. And then I can go ahead and create a method. So at override public boolean on command. We're then going to have four different arguments. The first one is going to be a command sender, which I'll call sender. And then we're going to have a command, which I'll call command. We're going to have a string called label and then a string array called args. And by default, I'm just simply going to return true, which means everything worked out okay. Now, because this command is going to require a player object, the very first thing I want to do is make sure that this command sender is going to be a player. So I can say, if not sender is an instance of player, then I can go ahead and return true. I can also send a message to the sender. So sender dot send message, only players can run this command. Obviously, you can add in whatever you want, but this will just make sure that once we're after this if statement, we can safely cast this command sender into an actual player, such as this right here. And now we have access to the player who ran the command. And at this stage, we don't have access to our spawn util. So I'm going to go ahead and create a constructor here, which is going to take in a spawn util argument, which will be called spawn util. And I also want this to be a private local variable on this class. So I could say private spawn util and I'll simply just call this the same thing, which is spawn util. And now in the constructor, I can just simply say this dot spawn util equals spawn util. Now we can finally say spawn util dot teleport passing in the player who actually ran the command. And this will actually teleport the player to the correct spawn. But of course, we need to actually initialize this class so we can head over to our main file. I can say get command passing in the string spawn dot set executor passing in a new instance of spawn which will then pass in the spawn util into the constructor. So now our spawn command should work, but we have nothing to actually set it to. So let's make a new class under commands, which will be called set spawn. This will be set up in a very similar way. So I'm actually just going to jump back into the spawn command and I'm going to copy everything after the actual class name. 
with Control C or Command C on a Mac, and then I can paste it in right here. Obviously, we need to change the name of our constructor. And then instead of saying spawnutil.teleport, I can now say spawnutil.set, passing in player dot get location. Then afterwards, we can send a message to the player. So I can say player dot send message, passing in chat color dot translate color code. So we can add in an and symbol and then and a. So this will be a white green color. And this is going to say set the server spawn. This will basically just be a confirmation letting the user know that they actually ran the command okay. And the spawn command doesn't necessarily need this because it should be obvious when they actually teleport across the world. If this tutorial is helping you, then consider helping me by leaving a like. And if you want to see more tutorials like this one, then subscribe to the channel. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. So now let's go back into the main file and let's go ahead and copy this. And now I want to create a new command for set spawn. And instead of passing in spawn, I can now pass in set spawn. Of course, we want to import this. And now our entire spawn system should be working. So I can go ahead and compile this. It's done compiling and I can now restart the entire server. So I'm now back into the server. I can do forward slash set spawn. And now it says set the server spawn. I can be going anywhere else on the server and I can now do forward slash spawn. And I'm now teleported to this exact location. And also if I fly way above the ground here and I go back into survival mode, I should now respawn on that exact location. Of course, I don't actually die here. So now I should respawn at that exact location as I do right here. So now we have a fully working spawn system set up. Do you want to learn even more about Minecraft plugin development? Go ahead and click on this playlist you see here. And if you have any video requests, feel free to leave them in the comments.